The next speaker is uh, representing a company with an amazing story behind. Back in 1945, the company was manufacturer of vegetable production. And it's an amazing fairy tale story, as I've mentioned, how in, it turned into the biggest or one of the biggest IoT companies in the world these days, uh, with offices in 61 countries, market capitalization of 20 billion. Uh, this guy brings in depth experience in the space of IoT and machine to machine, and we are so happy to welcome here on stage Vijay Anat. Please join me on stage. I'm surprised you're not bringing vegetables here on the I know, I should have started off with that. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome. The stage you is much. yours. Here's Thank the Thank you very much. So this makes it more, right? The, yeah, the big okay, one. Okay, good. Good morning, everyone. Internet of things. Internet of everything. A very nice jargon. I think that's, that's possibly uh, kind of capturing everyone's imagination uh, wherever you go, irrespective of what industry it is. Everyone is speaking about Internet of Things, Internet of Everything. So you, you always need to have one jargon that you can stick on to, right? We're good to have a lot of potential, immense possibilities out there, irrespective of what industry you think of, what kind of uh, uh, use cases that you think of. There are applicabilities everywhere. But is, is, that, is that success a straightforward one? I mean, is it, is it that hey, we can actually go there and make a success of IoT by just trying to think IoT, Internet of Things and Internet of Everything? Possibly no. For a layman, I would, I would actually say an Internet of Things is an internetwork of me, you, the table, the chair out there, that blue light out there which possibly should understand that, hey, Vijay doesn't like blue, let's change that to red. Bring all of that together. Bringing all of that together is probably not the end of it. Bringing all of that together in a form and fashion, which is probably going to create a broader business value to the ecosystem, to the society, to the community, that's probably where the big value of Internet of Things or Internet of Everything is going to be. Now, having said that, even before getting into Internet of Things, I just, just would like to have a little bit of uh, view around what is driving this new, uh, I should say, the buzzword uh, in the industry. It's gone through the same journey that probably Smack uh, had, had about five years back. Uh, social, mobility, cloud, we, we've gone through all that journey and IoT is probably going through that same uh, journey today. But what are those key drivers of the industry which is uh, essentially making this move towards that? So <clears throat> there's, a, there's a very changing business landscape today, right? I mean, everyone is talking about digitization the gap between the physical world and the digital world is essentially becoming very close. We want to kind of visualize everything digitally when it comes to anything which is physical. I want to be a digital entity. I don't want to be traveling all the way from Bangalore to the US to Germany and back to Istanbul and then to Bangalore. I should have a digital avatar of me which is essentially standing here and presenting it to you. How do I bring the physical and the digital world together? Every industry today is kind of struggling in terms of seeing how is it that they could be the true digital uh, innovators for, the, for their industry. There's a whole lot of data which is getting generated. Every industry talks about creating terabytes, petabytes of data, right? Now, how do you actually monetize all of that data? It's just not about generating the data. Technology comes in, technology enables you to generate data, persist data, but unless I can actually get value out of all of that data, insights out of that data, which is gonna help me innovate and help me go that next step in terms of the maturity, I think that data is not gonna be of any value at all, and that's where data monetization comes in. Last but not the least is the blurring industry uh, uh, boundaries. What we thought of as traditional boundaries of industries is kind of getting blurred now. I mean, everyone seems to be doing everything, isn't it? And that's, that's the new world. A telecom company, which you would have thought as just being responsible for a communication uh, uh, between two entities, is now getting converted into an organization which says, hey, I am a marketing organization. 
I'm not a communication organization. And a, and a, and a, a platform provider now comes in and says, hey, I'm not a platform provider. I am the enabler of technology for this marketing company which calls itself as a telco. The borders are blurry. So there's a very, there's, there's a very changing dynamic in terms of how the industries are evolving as they go forward. And all of this, be it in terms of the digital economy, the data monetization, or the, the blurring boundaries, is creating a completely different challenge for the industries, different ways in which, in which they need to kind of work and how they, uh, they innovate themselves in this journey. What does that bring us into? That brings us into transformation. Translate. If I have to be innovative, if I, if I need to kind of see what is it that me as an industry is going to be in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, I need to be transforming myself. I need to be changing myself. But having said that, within an ecosystem, a business ecosystem, there are very diverse, uh, diversifying objectives in terms of how the different stakeholders within an organization look at transformation, right? The business stakeholders would probably look at it very differently from your engineering stakeholders in an organization. And for us, to be enabling transformation and being successful in driving the transformation agenda for businesses, you need to be bringing together those diverging objectives of the business and the engineering together in such a way that you have a common base to all of this. So the businesses probably look at it more from, uh, from a perspective of how, how could they respond effectively to all the changing needs, how do they future-proof themselves, uh, bring, being more proactive in terms of the kind of services, the models, the, the, the engagement models, etc., that they offer. Whereas the engineering is looking at it more from a perspective of how do I foolproof my systems? How is it that I can optimize on my operations and my engineering? Very true, each of them is looking at transforming himself. But the drivers of transformation will need to look at bringing all of this together in such form and fashion that it actually encompasses the entire stakeholders of the business system. And Internet of Things, Internet of Everything, is one of those key enablers which is going to help this transformation. IOE, I'm, I'm just using this term, IoT. So we're kind of maturing from IoT to IOE, Internet of Everything. Is it actually Internet of Everything? Or is it an Internet of Experience? I go back to my statement earlier. It is not about an Internet work of things. It's essentially about how do you internetwork all of these things to create an experience for the end users, for the end consumers. And that's where the value comes in. I again repeat, it's all about creating a digital avatar of the physical avatar that you have and how closely you can bring together the physical world and the digital world. I was, I was in, um, in one of these conferences uh, the day before yesterday in Stuttgart. So the, the word that is used, which kind of stuck to my uh, 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 mind here, was the digital twin, right? A very catchy word. How can I create a digital twin to everything which is physical and create an experience in this digital twin which exactly reflects to the point or more the physical entity that we are trying to create a twin of? And that's where the success to this remains. Having said that, how do you create this experience, right? The experience is just not about essentially bringing together all of these entities and creating an experience on it. Internet of Things, for, for, for some of our learned friends here who are from industries like manufacturing, utilities, who have an idea of where, where this all goes, we've been connecting things and assets for, I don't know, years together, 100 years, 200 years. They have been connecting, they have been sending data. There's a lot of local uh, uh, processing of all of this information has been happening. There's a lot of insights which have been captured, have been delivered all of it. It's been happening for a long time. So what is the new difference that IoT or IOE is trying to bring in? If you look at the, the left-hand side here, just trying to represent that, isn't it? It's brown in the sense it's the existing world where there are things 
which are acting in silos and trying to be intelligent in silos. And they've been successful. But if I need to get into the next level of transformation, I need to essentially move on to the right where these silos are coming together in creating a context. Let me go back to what I said, essentially, right? I am connected. And essentially, that connected object knows exactly what my likings are. And that lighting system is a connected ecosystem, which has its own intelligence. Now, if I could bring together my connected ecosystem and that lighting connected ecosystem into a context which says, hey, this profile essentially likes this kind of lighting, you're creating a new possibility. You're creating a new context with a whole set of connected ecosystems. And that's essentially where we need to go, and that's essentially where the value is. So that's where the transformation begins and kind of creates new opportunities and new possibilities. Just to share a very a, a quick example, a transformation journey, so that uh, we can kind of relate to all of this. This is a real example that I personally was involved in, running this for one of our customers, who is a heavy earth-moving equipment organization. So you would have seen those big earth-moving equipments which are there in the construction sites, right? So as an organization, today they are at a maturity level. I'm talking about service transformation here. So your transformation could be service transformation, it could be product transformation, it could be process transformation. Think of it, there are possibilities across. Let's concentrate on one of them, the service transformation uh, angle to it. Now this is a customer who essentially is into manufacturing of these heavy earth moving equipments. And they lease out these equipments to their end customers. The model that they have today, whenever there is a problem on those equipments, their leasees call them and say, hey, we have a problem with your equipment. Guys, you need to send your service engineer across and fix that problem. So that's a reactive service model for them. How could I transform the service journey for them? That's the service transformation. If I can use technology in whatever form and fashion, IoT being one of them, Internet of Things being one of them, such a way that the service, the, that the service management becomes more proactive than reactive. The customer doesn't need to call up this organization and say, hey, I have a problem, send your engineer. The OEM needs to know much before that problem happens, that there is a possibility of a problem happening in the next one month. These are the set of engineers who are equipped to actually fix that problem. This is how the problem needs to be fixed. And these are the different spare parts which are probably going to be required to fix that problem. Now what happens? So you have that service engineer going out to the customer even before the problem has happened proactively and saying, hey, there's going to be a problem out there, and I'm fixing your problem even before it has happened. What have you achieved? Number one, if it had been a reactive mode, you're going to lose on your lease revenue. There's a, there's a revenue loss, leakage that happens there because your your equipment is not going to be usable for a week, 10 days, 15 days, depending upon what kind of a problem it is. You're getting into a bad customer experience. Because the customer says, hey, your equipments do not work. They do not work to the availability that you had promised. Third, if it had been something which was happening, uh, and the customer was the one who was getting to know, even without the OEM, OEM getting to know anything about it, the customer could have actually, or the leasee could have actually gone to a local vendor and procured the spare parts and got the service done. So there's, again, a service leakage revenue which is happening to the OEM. So how do you essentially move on from being a reactive service management company into a proactive service management company? That's the transformation that we're talking about here. So once you bring all of this together, your equipment is sending real-time insights, you get all of that data, you have uh, experts at the back who are reading that data, understanding that trend, and saying, hey, there's going to be a problem in the next one month. Kick through that process so that it gets fixed. You've actually moved 
in your maturity of service reps, uh, on your service management from being reactive into proactive. That's transformation, and that's what Internet of Things has essentially enabled by giving a real-time view of those equipments which are there on the field. Now, once you start thinking, you essentially have a whole lot of possibilities. It could be warranty. It could be in the way the processes are run in a manufacturing plant or within an organization. So it's all about how do you get real-time inputs, real-time information, and create a transformation journey for your customers across the different business ecosystems. I'd like to leave you with that. Thank you.